What is up you guys? It is Thanksgiving 2018 and I am hiking over here in the Fiscalini Ranch in Cambria, California. Cambria is a nice little town in San Luis Obispo County and I am on my way to attempt to get towards the ocean and uh, do a little shoot of the ocean, maybe some of the cliffs and uh, the surrounding hills and stuff like that. So I've got the Irix 11 millimeter Blackstone with me today. It is an 11 mil, so that's crazy wide. And I've actually never owned an 11 millimeter before. So thanks to Irix for sending that out for review. Stoked to see what I can get there. I'm also testing out the Deity D3 Pro mic. So that's what I'm using right now instead of the typical Rode microphone, like I usually use whenever I use a shotgun microphone. All right, so I've got the Irix 11 millimeter Blackstone here mounted on the Sony a7R3. I wanted to get that high megapixel count and just use this camera to its potential. So let's see what we can do. I can see the ocean over there in the clearing. So let's make our way over. All right, so I've made my way out of the clearing and I can finally see the ocean in the distance here. Let's get that exposure down and see what we can do with this Irix 11 millimeter Blackstone. I'll totally accept today as kind of a complete fail. We'll see if I can get any usable images from that 11 millimeter, but it just goes to show you, you're not always gonna get the shot that you think you are. So go out the next day and keep shooting. Another thing with my first vlog here is I'm vlogging on the a7 III with the 16 to 35 G Master. And I'm really curious to see how this like, extremely low light footage comes out. I think I'm at like ISO 8000 right now. So we'll see, just curious. But uh, I, I really like it so far. It's, it's nice and light I'm using this Joby Gorilla Pod, and uh, I really like it. So it is the next day, and I am down at the beach right now. I've got about 25 minutes till sunset. We are probably not going to see the sun today, but uh, this has been raining all day. There's been a little break in the rain, and so I thought I'd run down here and see what kind of shots I can get with that 11 millimeter. Today we were just too far back, so today I wanted to get right up in on the action. Brought out my little enduro tripod here, carbon fiber one. We'll see if I won't totally slip and biff it on these rocks. It's super low tide, so I'm gonna have to actually climb out on the slippery rocks and see what kind of shots I can get. But I am looking forward to it, so wish me luck. So one of my big concerns as I set up this shot here is that I definitely don't know the tide patterns. So while it's super low right now and I'm in an elevated position, uh, it might start coming in quick. So if it does, I'm gonna have to cut this short. So I think I got the shot that I was looking for. It's not the best thing in the world, but I think it properly demonstrates what this lens can do when it's put up closer to the subject that it's trying to photograph. I did uh, some shots of the ocean. I tried to let the water come in as far as it possibly could. I'm not really close enough to do um, long exposure photography and I don't have any filters for this lens. So maybe that's something that I'll try at a different date. It's also pretty dark out here. And because of the clouds, there's not really much like color going on. Uh, in the sky right now, it's supposed to be sunset, and that's kind of what I thought would happen. But I hope you guys saw the shots that I was looking for, how they differed from yesterday, and how big of a difference it makes when you can actually get up and close, up close and personal to the subject that you're trying to photograph with this crazy 11 millimeter lens. 
Also keep in mind that I'm really not a landscape photographer, so these images are gonna be mediocre at best, but they're just to show off the lens and what it can do. So that was tough. Um, I definitely didn't know the schedule of the tides. The tide was way out, which means I had to climb out way more on slippery rocks. But uh, once again, I hope you guys saw a couple shots that I got there and just saw the, man, the scope of that 11 millimeters just still astounds me every single time I shoot with it. With it raining all day and the clouds being out in big effect, I definitely was not able to uh, get much color in the sky as you can see in those photos as well. So anyways, on to tomorrow. Hopefully I get a few more shots and we will be able to really see the colors, contrast, and all that stuff that this Irix 11 millimeters has to offer. So we're back at the house now, it's the next day. I've had two good days of shooting with this lens. I've really enjoyed the Irix 11 millimeter F4 Blackstone, and I wanted to give you guys my kind of overall thoughts and opinions after you've seen me shoot with it. Overall, I really like this lens. It is definitely not a standard focal length. You really have to understand just how wide 11 millimeters is. It is crazy wide. And to be perfectly honest, I've shot with like 16 to 35, I'm shooting this on right now, uh, a 15 millimeter and 11 millimeters is so much wider than 15 millimeters. It is crazy. So typically when you go out in focal length, like telephoto, you don't really notice the difference between like 400 and 500 typically, but you really notice the difference when you go down lower from like 15 millimeters, 14 millimeters, all the way to 11, it is nuts. So right off the bat, know what you're getting into with an 11 millimeter lens. It's an F4 and you might think, well, I, I love F2.8 lenses or really wide aperture lenses, but at F4, man, you're getting everything in focus. You really don't need, unless you need you know, a ton of light, you really don't need like an F2.8 or lower lens. Also, when you're shooting on a Sony body like the A7R 3 here, I was able to manually dial in the steady shot settings. So now I have a stabilized 11 millimeter F4 lens. That's crazy. So shooting on these Sony bodies, um, you get stabilization with any lens that you put on it. And that's really awesome. One of the reasons that I moved over completely to Sony bodies. Like I told you yesterday, I'm definitely not a landscape photographer and I don't shoot a ton of really wide landscape photos. But in terms of color, contrast, sharpness, all that stuff, I'm really gonna let you be the judge. I'll link down below in the description to the images that I showed in this video. Now, they're not the best images, but I really hope that they show off what this lens can do. Um, they haven't been crazy post-processed, so I haven't really bumped up the sharpness a ton. So you guys be the judge there on sharpness and contrast and all that stuff. But if you're shooting raw, you're gonna be able to manipulate that so well. So yeah, you be the judge of that. This lens is gonna be sharp. You're gonna stop it down most of the time anyways from F4 to like F8, F9. Everything's gonna be in focus. And when shooting with these Sony bodies, you're gonna be able to use that focus assist, punch it in a couple times, manually focus, gonna be perfect, and you're gonna nail the shot. So some of my favorite things about this Irix 11 millimeter F4 Blackstone is, man, I love this huge front element. Focus, focus, focus. Check this thing out right here. It is absolutely massive, beautiful, and huge. I love that. I love that it also has a built-in lens hood with that bulbous front element. Uh, it kind of protects it when I set it down. I can set it down straight if I need to. I also really like the manual focus ring. Um, since it is a manual focus lens, having a good manual focus ring with a long throw is really important. And it also stops on infinity focus. So you can stop it on infinity, but then it'll actually let you go just a little bit past infinity, which is really cool. I found that stopping it on infinity and then moving it back just a hair is my easiest method for getting like a landscape totally in focus. So I really like the manual focus ring. It is super nice and smooth. This lens also has a focus lock on it. So if you find the focus you want, you can actually lock with this very top ring, that focus wheel, and you won't be able to move that. Another thing that I really like about the 11 millimeter here from Irix is the all metal construction. This thing is built like an absolute tank. So it weighs so much that it's gonna destroy all those uh, weight issues that you have when using a Sony mirrorless body. This thing weighs just as much as a DSLR now, but 
that's totally all right with me. It wasn't really a big deal. Here's a couple things I noticed about the 11 millimeter Irix. They're not really cons, they're just things that I noticed. I took this out in the rain and I noticed that it was kind of hard to wipe off this front element. The water wasn't really beating and wiping off really easily. It kind of stuck on the lens. So as I wiped it off, it smeared a little bit. I had to get out a microfiber cloth really work on it after I got it dry in order to get it off. After that, it was totally fine. Um, I'm not sure if that's been other people's experiences or not, but that was mine. Another thing is that because the front element, and this is really common with these really wide angle lenses, their 15 millimeter doesn't have this problem, but because this front element is so massive, you're gonna have to get a special filter holder um, if you wanna do like a long exposure photography. That was something I noticed. I also don't know how weather sealed it was, and I did take it out in light rain and i think it's been totally fine i don't know how weather sealed it is especially when using like a little adapter it does have a little weather gasket on the back here but um yeah that's just something to be aware of and look more into if you shoot out in the elements more often than i do and while this issue wasn't a con for me, some of you are definitely worried about the weight of your kit. This is a very heavy lens, so just be aware of that when you're getting it. They do have the Irix 11mm f4 Firefly, and it actually has uh, more of a plastic construction that's going to save a little bit on weight. But I really like the solid feel of all metal lenses, and whenever I can, I'm going to get an all metal lens just like this. Last but not least, you're definitely asking, what is this gonna run me? So at the time of filming, it is the end of November, 2018. The Irix 11 millimeter F4 Blackstone edition right here is about $650. That's actually $125 cheaper than it previously was. And in my opinion, that's definitely a steal and really worth looking at this lens for. If you are using a Sony body, you are going to have to get an adapter. I'm using the Metabones Mark IV. I also have the Sigma MC11, and there's some cheaper adapters out there as well. So take that into consideration. You're gonna have to get an adapter. If you're using this on a Canon body, you're good to go. But personally, I prefer to use manual focus lenses on Sony bodies just because the focus assist features are so robust. So check the links down in the description below. I will link several retailers down there. You can check what is ever the best price for you. Thank you for using our links. It really helps me create videos like this and invest time into doing this review. Speaking of this review, I hope you guys liked the vlog style. It was my first time doing it. I hope to make this uh, more of a regular thing in the future if you guys like it. So if you did, make sure and like this video. Comment down below with your thoughts, your feelings. Give me advice on how to vlog better. I am all for learning. There is no ego here. Just keep those comments positive. Give me some con constructive criticism on the vlog style, and I'll definitely take that into consideration on my next video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around if you're still here at this part of the video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you get notified whenever I release videos just like this. Anyways, happy late Thanksgiving. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.